This is Tommy with Triple X Terminating Company. Today we're out in Hillsboro, North Carolina. It is a really, really, really beautiful day out there today. It feels real good out here. And so what we got, we got a uh, manufactured home. We're doing videos on how different things are handled, how we how we handle certain situations. This particular house here, we did a uh, termite inspection for the buyer and we found some termites. And so in that situation, what we'll do usually is uh, uh, we'll give an estimate for a treatment. And this time they elected to do the full treatment to make sure that the house has a warranty and everything's covered. Um, and so this is going to be a rundown on how we treat a manufactured home that has termites, what we need to do, what goes into it, and uh, how also I'm going to do a little bit on how we actually price these and, and why they cost what they cost. We get a lot of questions about that. So um, let's get to it and we'll start with uh, exactly what kind of work we're doing here, what the trenches look like, and what all we got to do to fix it to take care of the termites. So when we're doing the outside, one thing we need to do is we need to trench the outside foundation walls. And uh, it's not too big of a deal, it's not too bad of a situation, but basically I want to put a nice trench along that uh, foundation wall, get down to about the footer. You can tell we're near the footer now. We're going to put the chemical down beside it. And um, so what we need to do, we're going to clear this all out, trench the outside foundation wall. We like to do the same thing on the inside foundation wall and around all the piers. And uh, we're going to need to apply termiticide at four gallons per 10 linear feet. And uh, so basically what you want to do is kind of section this area off, measure it, and every 10 feet, you know, you got to put four gallons of termiticide. And uh, as we're spraying it, we'll spray it in this trench, then we'll fill the dirt back in the trench and then spray the dirt that we put back in there. And on this particular place, that should be all we're going to be doing. There's no uh, concrete porches. There's just wood porches. And as we don't have to drill that, it's just pretty much a trench or treat on the outside. We'll have to do some drilling on the inside where we found the termites. But this is the first part of it. So we're going to start getting busy on this, and then we'll go into the crawl space. And in, this, in, in the crawl space, the main area where we had some uh, termite evidence, and it can be something as small as, as this. It's hard to see this, but this is a termite tunnel stain. You can see part of the tunnel down there. This was a tunnel that came up, got knocked down, checking if it was active. But just something this tiny is, is what we have to look for when we're doing inspections. And this is a termite tunnel stain on a pier in a crawl space. And so the rules are within four feet of this, we need to drill any of the piers or any of the masonry sections of the wall that need to be drilled. And of course, we got a we got a trench inside here. We got a trench around these piers. Um, so in this case, we're going to have to drill this pier. We're going to have to drill this pier, and then there's another pier back here beside me. Um, so we're going to have to drill this section out, and then trench it, and then of course trench the the rest of the whole place. And uh, that's basically what we got to do in this section of the crawl space to take care of the area where the termite evidence was found. All right, so you know we're in the crawl space, but this is what we got to do. Um, you got to come around to all the piers, and you got to dig a trench. Um, and uh, this is not this is not easy work. Uh, a lot of guys are doing videos of do-it-yourself um, uh, termite jobs where you just do the outside. But no, you need to come up in these crawl spaces. You need to trench around these piers. And if you want to do a real good job, you also need to trench around the foundation wall. And so in these um, double wides or these manufactured homes, very often they'll have uh, a lot of concrete spill over uh, where they did the um, where they did the fat, the footers and the um, the piers and all that stuff. And so we've got to kind of dig around all that. And uh, so yeah, this is this is this is what it is. If you want to do termite treatments, you want to do it right. You've got to come in here and do this work. Um, and believe me, if if you could do an effective termite treatment by just treating the outside of the house, just trenching the outside of the house, why wouldn't we do that? You know, that's what we would do. It would be better for us instead of us having to pay these poor fellows. And of course, I can do it myself to come up underneath here and do this kind of hard work. But it's necessary because if all you do is have termite aside on the outside of the house. Um, you know, three, four years from now, that may be disturbed. You know, someone might put a flower bed in there, or it's also susceptible to, you know, more weather. There might be some erosion that goes on. Um, so you definitely have got to, with all the labeling, you've got to trench around the piers. Um, but we also like to come in and, and um, trench on the inside foundation wall as well as the outside foundation wall. And also go underneath here and look for wood debris. All this wood debris, we got to get out from underneath this house. This is all conducive for termites. And um, this is quite a bit of work. We're going to have to drill these piers in a minute, but first we got to do the finish up this trenching, and uh, we'll come back and see how the drilling's done. You want to go high or you want to go low? Uh, get on the scene. Okay, so up underneath here, you got to lug this big, giant, heavy hammer drill. 
up underneath the house, and this is what you got to do. And that's what it takes. It's um, you got a uh, hollow Rolls block in. here. You got to get in there. You got to get chemical inside that void. Now you might think it's fine because it's sitting on a footer, but there are very often there's cracks in the footers. They can come right up the middle of those uh, piers, and, and they are within one sixteenth of an inch. Yep, and they are within um, four feet of the termite evidence. So that's what the label requires. That's what we got to do. Start. And then of course we got to get in here. We actually got to spray the chemical each one of these piers. These piers take about a gallon, one up here like this takes about a gallon and a half or so. Up here like that takes about two and a half gallons. You gotta uh, spray those trenches nice and full. And the trenches are through every single pier, along every single foundation wall, all the way through this place. So it's a whole lot of chemical that we've got to put here to protect this thing from termites for the next 10 to 15 years. A lot of work goes into it. Even when your trenches are away from the wall, you always want to spray against the foundation wall as well. Just because you spray right here a little ways away from it don't mean you're going to have a good protection. You always yeah. want to get that dirt right at the foundation wall saturated as well. Okay, there you go. Ready? Yep. And this is how we're injecting chemical into the masonry bits. All the blocks. We do the same thing in the concrete uh, floor of the garage whenever we drill that. Got to get chemical inside there too. So yeah, we get it quite a bit. You know, um, we'll do an estimate on a termite, on a termite treatment. Give someone a price, and they're like, "Man, that's like that's expensive for bugs." It is. I mean, it, it costs a lot of money. Um, and it's it's very expensive to take care of these bugs, but there is a lot of work that goes into this. I've just I've came up at the end of this job. Ryan's been here um, pretty much all morning. So a job like this, on we'll have a man out here for about usually four hours or so, maybe five hours. And he's got to do all the digging, got to do all the trenching, got to do all the uh, uh, drilling. He's got to spray it all. It's, it's quite a bit involved. And, you know, to do it, and we're using, you know, Fipronil is the, the particular chemical we're using today is Fuse. And it's got Fipronil in it along with the minor culprit. And uh, so, you know, uh, you can get decent control by just doing the outside. Um, but, you know, as professionals, we've seen too many situations where um, someone might change the soil on the outside. Maybe someone comes and puts a foundation drain around the outside and removes all your treated soil. And uh, so it is just, you will get a, a better long-term protection if you trench the inside foundation wall as well as the outside foundation wall and trench around all the piers. And basically the way that the state of North Carolina tells us to do it is what we do. We don't do waivers unless there's a reason to waiver something. I think the recommendations by the state are good recommendations. I think they make sense, and uh, so we like to follow them. Um, and also the labeling. Uh, the labeling calls for uh, even the perimeter plus type treatments. You'd still need to get in there and drill the areas where the termites are, and you need to get around the piers. Um, there's just a lot of skipping that stuff. And uh, to get this, to do this right, um, it, it is a lot of work. It's a lot more than what people think of what they're being told right now. So um, this is what really goes into it. So another thing to consider when we're talking about these termite treatments is equipment that you need to really do it right. So, uh, you know, trenching around the outside. Now you could do that with a trench shovel. There's, just, there's several things you can use for that. Uh, drilling through the, through the block, um, a hammer drill, there are a lot of hammer drills that can do that. 
We use heavy duty ones because we do them all day long. We do a bunch of them. We're fully prepared to come out and do these jobs. Um, now, our equipment on the back of the truck here, we got a 150 gallon tank. Um, and that's probably one of the most valuable things that we have with the motor hooked up to it to pump the chemical uh, through the hose into the crawl space. That's one of the harder parts of the treatment is first mixing the right amount of chemical and then delivering it to where you need it to go. Um, so that's all things to consider and uh, you really need the right equipment. If you're trying to do this with anything else other than professional equipment, it's going to be a million times harder and it's not gonna, you're not going to do as good of a job. You're just not. We can put this chemical anywhere we want to on this property somewhat easily at a good pressure. We can rot it into the ground and it's just a much better way of doing it. This is a pretty good example here. This is a 30 foot wall exactly. So four gallons per 10 linear feet means we need to put 12 gallons alongside this wall. And we know um, our sprayer will do a gallon in about 11 seconds. So about 44 seconds for four gallons and uh, 132 seconds or so for um, the 12 gallons we're gonna need. And as we do it now, of course, that takes away the time right there because you're stopping that. But that's kind of as you're doing it, you're counting. And uh, so every 11 seconds, you know, you're putting out a you're putting out a gallon. But basically, what you're doing, you got to put you got to put the part of the chemical in the trench, and then fill the dirt back over the top, and and then treat the top of that dirt. You want to make sure there's there's treated soil, a barrier of treated soil. And I wouldn't even call it a barrier because this is non-repellent. But you want to make sure you've got a a good row of treated soil above that footer, right beside the footer and above the footer. And so that's kind of the purpose. And so just this wall right here, this one little wall where the crawl space is, is uh, we're gonna be putting four gallons just in this part. So we also gotta do that on the, um, and we're gonna be putting 12 gallons just on this part. And we also gotta do that on the inside of the foundation wall. So really this wall gets 24 gallons altogether. And one of the main reasons you want to um, you spray about half of it and then kick it in and fill it out and spray the rest of it is you want to make sure that soil that you're putting back on top is um, is also treated um, if you just sprayed the trench let it dry and then put the, the uh, dirt on top of that just fill in your trenches you would create a bridge that termidor I mean that termites could possibly miss your treatment so that's basically what we do we got this all the way around the house on the outside and the inside of the crawl space. So uh, a lot of work, a lot of product needs to be delivered. It's gotta be delivered properly. You can't just, you can't just guess. I mean, it's never, it's never down to the exact gallon, but as professionals, we've got to get it close. We've got to deliver the right amount of product. And another thing too is, uh, a lot of people ignore this. When I see the videos on YouTube, the do-it-yourself type stuff, is that now we're lucky on this one because it's kind of a shallow footer. We're right at the footer, so it's, it's pretty easy. But a lot of houses, that footer might be, you know, three or four foot down. So the label's telling you, you've got to go four gallons per 10 liter feet per foot of depth. And a lot of people don't, don't realize that. So if your footer's three, three feet below the ground that you're treating, you're going to have to take your chemical and times it by three. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot more. It's a lot more to it than people think. Um, and you also got to make sure you're, you're dressed properly for it. You got to have gloves, long sleeves, long pants, and... Um, you know, you gotta make sure you're looking at the personal protective equipment that you're supposed to have. Uh, most of the termiticides now are not extremely harsh like they were when I was a kid. Things like chlordane, um, you know, that stuff, you'd smell it for, for two years after you applied it. This stuff here is actually much more mild, but it's also very dangerous to non-target insects. One of the biggest points I wanna make when we're applying this stuff is a lot of people will have bushes around their house. And there's a big temptation just to kind of spray this stuff willy-nilly all over it especially during the springtime when you might have a bunch of bees flying around your bushes. Uh, bees are very, very uh, important for us. We, we've got to do what we can to protect bees. And this particular stuff and a lot of the products that are used for uh, termites today are very, very toxic to Hymenoptera. That's the family that bees belong to. Um, and so ants and bees, this stuff works great on ants, but unfortunately it also works incredibly well on bees. So it, if you're spraying the outside of your house, Try to, if possible, not apply this during the springtime when the bees are pollinating. If they're pollinating near bushes, try to not put this anywhere near those bushes. Do not spray this on bushes. Do not spray this anywhere where pollinating bees can be. Uh, this can be devastating. This stuff, uh, just uh, one or two bees coming in contact with this stuff could completely wipe out a hive. Um, you've got to uh, be very careful not to 
uh, allow this to affect bees as you're applying it. This stuff is very, very dangerous. Okay, so for, when we're for, figuring out what we got to charge for a house like this, how, the, the way termite pricing is done, is uh, of course there are considerations put in like um, how low is the house, how what what kind of soil is it, is it easy to dig, is it hard to dig, um, what's in the crawl space, how what all do we have to drill, what all works involved. Now a manufactured home, especially a manufactured home with like a, a wood front porch uh, like that is actually one of the easier treatments because it's mostly trenching and treating and we might we just have to drill where the termite evidence is. So that's actually a, a easier, more cut and dry treatment to kind of price. Um, so the main thing that we're looking at is uh, linear footage. Um, and to figure that out, you got to measure the wall. So this is the wall on the side, this is the front wall. And so this, this is a 30 by 76. Now with linear footage, what you have to figure out though, is you have to figure out the outside and uh, also the inside because we're going to be treating the outside foundation wall and the inside foundation wall. So we count all that. So you go um, uh, 30, both sides, you go 30 times 4. That equals 120. That'll give you this, the linear footage of the sides. You go 76 times 4. That's the outside, the inside, the outside, the inside on both walls. 76 times 4 gives us 304. So all together, we've got 424 linear foot. That's the walls, the foundation walls. Now, I usually, I'll usually round that up to uh, 430. And then you would go, uh, uh, we're doing ten, uh, 4 gallons per 10 linear feet. So you'd break that down into 10. So that'd be 43 times 4. Give you 172 gallons is what you're going to be using um, for the walls of the, of the crawl space. Um, then you also need to consider the piers. Now, this particular house had about uh, uh, 38 piers. And uh, you want to go about 1.5 gallons for each one of these piers. These are the bigger piers that have a four block base um, or a two block base. And uh, so you're using, gonna use about 1.5 gallons uh, per each one of those piers. That'll give you 57 gallons. And um, now also on the, where the wood decks are, where the wood decks make contact, where the wood makes contact to the ground, you wanna spray a little bit around there. We're, I'm gonna estimate about 12 gallons we'll use on the outside of this deck. Uh, same thing with the back stairs, about four gallons over there, not much. Uh, but you wanna spray those areas. Even though it's treated wood, you got lattice there, you got you know some wood contacts, so you wanna put some chemical down there. Um, so with this job, you'd have uh, the two, 229 gallons plus the 16 gallons for the porches. All together, you're going to have about 245 gallons, finished gallons of product that you're going to deliver to this house. Um, now, we treated at 0.067%. Um, and the product we're using for this is Fuse. Now, we also use Terminal from time to time, but Fuse is a very good alternative. It's, uh, it's cheaper, um, but it's, it also uses the same active ingredient as Terminal, which is Fipronil. And it combines it with a, the active ingredient of Primus, which is a uh, imidacloprid. Those are two great products. This product combines them. Uh, we can deliver it at a little bit cheaper price. When we're involved in real estate transactions, you really got to kind of keep the price down to an acceptable level. Um, you know, pricing it for Terminor would take the price a little bit too high, and uh, a lot of people are not going to pay that. I would rather do a full treatment with a product like Fuse than to only be able to do a spot treatment with something like Terminor. Um, and so that's why we go with this on a lot of these real estate transactions to make sure we can get the job. Um, so in this job here, you're going to need the, uh, we're going to need the 27.5 ounce bottles. Each 27.5 ounce bottle will make hundred gallons of product. Um, so you're going to need two and a half of those bottles, uh, to, to deliver the amount of product we're going to need here. And so our price to treat this house today ended up being around 700 bucks. Um, now, I know there's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there, but, you know, if you really think about it, this is, a, this is about four and a half, five hours of work for two men um, and uh, two and a half bottles of the Fuse, and that's two and a half bottles of the 27.5. Um, but also, it's a matter of uh, getting the chemical where it actually needs to be. It's a matter of getting the 245 gallons everywhere it's got to go. So if you want to try to mix up this stuff in a bucket and drag it up underneath one of these places and actually, you know, deliver it that way. And that's just going to be, that's going to be a heck of a lot of work. Um, so that's the thing to consider is the actual equipment to do it right. Um, you know, uh, and how much is your time worth? You know, us, we're professionals. We got the equipment, we're ready to go. We can deliver it. And, um, you know, I, I think $700 to treat a house this size and deliver the kind of product we're delivering, the kind of quality we're delivering is very, very reasonable. And um, I think it would be very, very hard for someone who's not a professional and does not have this equipment to be able to deliver the same amount of value um, and, and be able to handle it um, and it'd be worth 
uh, and it'd not be worth to just pay someone that amount of money to do it. Plus, we give a warranty on this house. We're covered by insurance, and uh, we will cover this house with a warranty for a year. It can be renewed if the people want to renew it, and we cover future damage and all that. So it's a, to me, it's a, it's an excellent value. And um, honestly, no matter where you're at in the country, I think if you really shop around and you and you you know try to find companies who um, actually uh, are local companies, you might want not want to go with a big national company. You might want to go with a local company, um, and you're, you'll find that you'll get better deals. Um, and and I think I think it's really I think it's really worth it. Um, to go ahead and just just pay a professional to do it. Now, there's nothing wrong with shopping around. There are companies that'll come out here and tell you that it's going to cost, uh, you know, three thousand dollars to treat the house. Now, if you got someone giving you a price like that, shop around. And probably the best tip I could ever give anybody about trying to find the best deal you can find on a treatment like this is to call your local realtor. There's a, your your real estate agent is an incredible tool that you have in your community. Um, call a local realtor and get a recommendation from them. And then call that company and tell them that the realtor sent you. And I guarantee you, you will get the best possible price you can get if you go about it that way. Um, but th I would recommend that. Um, now, if you want to try to go about it yourself, though, if you have any questions, you can always comment on one of our videos. You can contact us at um, AAAExterminating at gmail.com. You can email us. We'll be glad to answer any kind of questions you have. Um, but but it's definitely don't take it lightly and don't think that you can just spray a little bit around the outside and control termites. If you want to do it, you want to do it right.